she walks down the hall Puts all our lives on a shelf Holding the keys to our misery How does she live with herself? How does the warden sleep at night After the long days through? Does she toss and turn to sit conscience burn? Is she a prisoner too? When the warden goes home to his house near stone, how does she get any rest? How does the warden sleep at night after the long days through? Does she toss and turn to sit conscience burn? Is he a prisoner too? Oh, warning, yeah, warning. Are you so different than me? Hey, warning, mm, warning. What does it mean to be free? Just like me, I wonder if she can ever find peace in her dreams. How does the warden sleep at night after the long days through? Does she toss and turn to serve conscience burn? Is she a prisoner? Good manners and the taxes. It's one of the oldest houses in Brooklyn. It's 
it just has one ground for the bridge to fill and furnish it. Except for the electricity. We use it as little as possible. It was Malin who persuaded us to put it in. Yes, I can understand that. Eunice Malin seems to live only for the bright life. The poor girl has to work so late. I understand she's taking her son Edwin out again to the theater tonight. Teddy, your sister will be here a little later. Delighted. We're so happy it's your Edwin Malin to the theater. Yes, it's a new experience for me too. Wait up till 3 o'clock in the morning for my son to return home. Oh, Reverend Harper, I hope he doesn't screw the bar mountain. Well... We feel so guilty if he did, Sister Martha and I. It was here in our home that our new family first met your son Edwin. Well, I must admit, I have been watching the intimacy between two grow with some trepidation. Oh, you're worried. Oh, I must be catching a cold. No, dear, it was very hard to see. Bless I'll be frank with you, Miss Abby. The only reason for concern is Malin's unfortunate connection with the theater. The theater? Oh, no. Malin writes for the New York newspaper. Yes, I know that. But a dramatic critic is constantly exposed to the theater, and I don't doubt that some of those things. Well, not Malin. You need to have no fear of that. Our Malin positively despises the theater. Really? Yes, she writes awful things for the theater. We can't blame her poor thing. She can't stand all these modern musicals and romantic comedies. My, my. Only 
worry for Teddy's after we're gone. Yes, that's not a problem. The men's made all the arrangements for Teddy to go to Happy Dale Sanitarium after we pass on. Fun idea, a very pleasant place. Yes, give our very best to your dear Edwin. He's such a saint. I'm sure we mustn't worry about her. She won't interfere with our plans for Madeline and Edwin. Teddy, good news for you. You're going to Panama to do another walk for the cup. Oh, delight, delight. Jolly good, jolly good. I shall prepare for the journey at once. <laughs> Abby, while I was out, Yes, dear, I just couldn't wait for you and I didn't know when you'd be back. I remember Harper was coming. But, all by yourself. Oh, I'm gonna look fine. I'll run right downstairs and see. No, no, dear, it wasn't any time and I was all alone. Well, Martha, just look in the window seat. <laughs> Yeah, some 
plenty of lunatic. One of those whodunits called Murder Will Out. Anyways, it just uttered the name to Edwin, so let's drop it forever. Oh dear, box the word then. Um, yeah, what a play. When the curtains go up, the first thing you see is a dead body. Now, Teddy's working on the new 
Well, 
if your mind is made up, dear. Yes. Um, have you had the paper journal? No, but I'll turn to it right away and I'll call you when I have them. Thank you, Dr. Witherspoon. Another Roosevelt. Oh, dear. My, my. <laughs> now listen, darlings. I've got to run over to Judge Ryan, but before I do, I want you to promise me something. Well, we have to know what it is first. Well, I love you both very much. And you both know that I'd do anything in the world for you. Don't you? Yes, dear. All right, well, in that case, I want you to do one little thing for me, like good girls. What is it you want us to do, Madeline? Don't do anything. I mean, don't do anything! Don't let anyone in this house let Mr. Who's in primary is. Get off that paper! I can't talk to you. I can't talk to the truth. <laughs> now listen, I also want to let anything in the world to happen to either of you. But what on earth can happen to us? Well, anyway, so do that one little thing for me, won't you? Alright, where's my oh, there it is. But Madeline. What, darling? We were planning on holy services before dinner. But couldn't I wait until I came back? Oh, I can you can try this with me. Yes, I'll sing with you, I'll dance with you, I'll do anything. But remember, don't let anyone in this house until I came back. You promise? Good. Fine. And Madeline's well too. I know about Madeline. I've seen her picture at the top of the tree. 
are very fond of the Madeline. Well, Martha, we mustn't let what's on the stove boil over. This fuel excuses, Jacqueline. Unless you're in a hurry to go somewhere. They got pictures of that face. We gotta operate on you right away. We gotta find some place for Mr. Spinoza, too. Don't waste any worry on that, rat. But we got hot stiff on our hands. Forget Mr. Spinoza. But Jackie, we can't just leave a body in the trunk. You shouldn't have ended him just because he messed with you us. This is what happens. He said it looked like that famous actress was that right also. That's your work, Doctor. You did that to me. <laughs> take, this, take it easy, Jackie. We'll find some place and I'll fix you up right away. Tonight. Yes, tonight. But I have to eat first. Well, I'm sure you both want to get to wherever you're going. And we're glad it took the time to stop by and say hello. But you were never happy while we were in this house, and we were never happy while you were in it. So we just have to say, to say, goodbye. <laughs> I'm regretting the many heartaches I've received you as a child. You were quite a child to us, Jack. But my great disappointment is Dr. Stitch. I promised her that when we passed his work, I took time to bring you one of my favorite aunts. Oh. Well, Martha, it is a pretty good type hot roast. Hot roast. It's the very least we can do. Thank you. Thank you. Well then, we'll hurry it along. We'll hurry it along. <laughs> well, we got a meal anyway, but what about after? Oh, we'll be invited to stay there. And if they say no, it's not peaceful here. Oh, we'll be invited. That's what makes this house so perfect for us. It's so peaceful. Charge! Hello again. It's me, Warden Deeds. I'm back with only four short two. I've been sitting just over there in my chair, and I've been reading about the difference between the word famous and the word infamous. Now that you've all met Jacqueline Brewster and her, and her traveling companion, I'll let you decide which word best describes their achievement. Mr. 
Mr. Hoskins. Oh, Mr. Hoskins. It can be very comfortable for him in there. Good so patient. Poor dear. I think I better have Teddy take him downstairs. Right. General John was very pleased. He said the canal was just the right size. Teddy, go oh, Teddy. Good news for you. You're going to need another lock for the canal. Dear me, it will be a shock to the general. No, Teddy, we must keep this a secret. Yeah. A state secret? Yes, a state secret. Promise us, Teddy? You have the word of the President of the United States. Cross my heart, hope to die. Now let's see, how are we going to keep this a secret? Well, Teddy, I think you better go back upstairs. And when I turn out the lights and everything's dark, you come back down and get the poor dear. Now come along now. And we'll come all along later and hold the services. And where is the poor devil? In the window seat, dear. It seems to be spreading. You've never had any of your victim in there before. <laughs> Abby, I haven't even seen Mr. Hopkins. Oh my goodness, that's right, you were out. Well, come along now. You know, he's quite good looking, considering he's no longer breathing. <laughs> oh. uh, we'll bring him along your seat. Your room's upstairs, waiting for you. Go right up.
Dr. Witherspoon? Well, that's amazing, yes. Let me speak to Dr. Witherspoon, please. But, but Sweetheart, please! This is important. Now, hello? Oh, Dr. Witherspoon, this is Madeline Brewster. You can take your honeymoon, your wedding ring, your taxi, your window seat, put them in a barrel, and roll them right off Niagara Falls. Yes, do come in. 
Hey, now, Sarah O'Hara. This is our niece, Madeline. I'm Martha Brewster. This is my sister, Abby Brewster. Pleased to meet you all. I'm glad to see you, Officer O'Hara. And this is also our niece, Jacqueline. Please to meet you all. Say, your face is familiar. Haven't you seen a picture of you somewhere before? As a matter of fact, I am. We'll all be ready to watch. Oh, no, come on, what's the rush? Why don't you stick around until my sister leaves? Say, you are the Madeline Brewster, the dramatic critic, are you? Yes, why? I want to look you great for me. I'm a playwright. No. <laughs> I'm working on a play of my own. Of course you are. <laughs> yes. Well, well, maybe I can help you with my clothes. Go into the kitchen. Oh. Hey, can you whip up a sandwich for Officer O'Hara? I'm salad all right. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> I hope you don't mind eating in the kitchen, Officer O'Hara. And where else would you eat? <laughs> 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 Say, Abby, what do you think? Now let's see, Jacqueline. I'll Keep this officer busy in the kitchen and give you a chance to get out. All three of you, you, Dr. Stitches, and Spinoza. Now, if you don't leave, I'll be an officer or a hair and introduce her to Spinoza. Miss Brewster, my play takes place in. I'll be right with you, O'Hara, right with you. Spinoza, why do you need fast time salad you've got your paws on? Now, get going, all three of you. Because you've got to hold the costumes? Well, I'm not! 
Once the doctor signed these papers here, I don't care who knows about them. Prostate family. You should feel the same way about Spinoza. Oh, yeah, Spinoza. Where are you going? To the doctor, you know, where are you? Oh. And when I come back, I expect you to be gone. Don't wait for me to return, or else. Yale? 
How'd you, how'd you get all tied up with my crazy sister? Long story, it's my narrative, I'm not pleased. Listen, stop it, doctor, no, stop it. You get out of here. Jackie's in a bad mood. Bad things happen, terrible things. Now look, doctor, stop telling me about Jacqueline. I'll take care of Jacqueline, you take care of yourself. Get going, look, this is my house. Besides, I've got to wait here for Dr. Witherspoon. Maybe someplace, somewhere, people in the place act like they got sense. But not here, not today. Madeline Brewster, looking back on it, well, it's also easy she hasn't got a clue what's about to hit her over the head. <laughs> well, anyway, depending on who's telling this tale, and what convenient facts are left out, no reports of life threatening head wounds are covered. And as you can see here, Dr. Stitch actions prove time. Well, isn't this great? So there I was, all waiting to be. So great victory, and there was my sister. Now she's getting ready to be pulled by fine furniture, like a big giant stick. <laughs> Down at the police station, the story is not that very, but the way we remember hearing it, and from the reports that got filed, it was Doctor Stitch who most likely saved Madeline Brewster from one splittingly painful head wound. That was a blood one, but now get a load of this. Look, just look at the attitude. Large as life. I was too confident. As I said, just waiting here to be pummeled by fine furniture like a big, giant dope. Not very bright. You stay out of this! Had Dr. Stitch decided to stay out of it, Miss Brewster probably would have made the trip down to Panama with those, now, 13 dead bodies. That's true. Thank you for that. This part of the story completely baffles me. Apparently, the court girl deliberately pulled a chair and sat down in it. It's my understanding that Dr. Stitch was specifically attempting to warn her, and she fell right into Jackie's room. Madeline, I've been away for 20 years, but never mind, dear sister, we out of my mind. Jackie, no. Dr. you are right. Where are we? She must not be getting toast. To the bitter end of my dear sister, Madeline. Now, who on earth is this? 
Oh, just some woman who's been hiding from the law for years. Oh, okay. <laughs> Matt, can you tell the lieutenant she can call off the big search party? We found her at the Brewster's house. Shall we bring her in? All right, we'll hold her right here. The lieutenant is on her way over. Oh, I've been caught? Fine, all right, you've got me. I suppose you're my stupid sister was supposed to reward. Reward? What oh, reward? Yes, reward. I want this to the You think my answer should be called charming the ladies? Well, let me tell you. There's 15 bodies ready to be sold. Be careful what you say about your aunts. They happen to be friends of ours. I'll show them to you. Jacqueline, don't you start making any more trouble. Do you hear me? Witherspoon! What is this becoming quite a party? Mr. President? Taft. 
<laughs> this is a tab. This is Dr. Witherspoon. She'll be your guide to Africa. Oh, jolly good, jolly good. I'll bring down my equipment immediately. Quiet, Abby. Quiet, Martha. I'm going on my hunting trip to Africa. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> George! Oh, dear. My, my. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Teddy can't go now. We won't permit it. Yes, Teddy's going tonight. He's been blowing his bugle again. And that was enough. We promise to take his bugle away. We won't be separated from our Teddy. I'm sorry, ma'am. It's time. Madeline, how can you allow this? You promise. Your niece had nothing to do with this. The law is the law. Teddy's committed himself, and now he has to go. <laughs> huh? If he's going, then we're going to. Yes, Dr. Witherspoon will just have to take us with him. Oh, dear. Why my? Why? Why not? Why not indeed? Oh, well, now indeed. It's we them to want to go, but it's quite impossible. We never take same people at Happy Dale. Oh, no, 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 these two little same people throwing with all the others could get lost in the shuffle. You can arrange that. Oh, no, 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 no. Just throw them in or they'll get all mixed up like a spicy nut casserole. That's not <laughs> Oh, no, it's quite famous. Now, let's be sensible, ladies. You need Jacqueline's telling tall tales of 13 bodies buried in your cell. But there are 13 bodies in our cellar. What? Certainly there's 13 bodies down in the cellar. There are hundreds more in the attic, Lieutenant. <coughs> Pardon Mom Madeline. She's been acting strange all day. Madeline, stop this nonsense at once. Well, right now I wouldn't know what is or isn't strange anymore. Better have a look at that cellar. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll bring down my bodies down from the attic, and you dig up yours from down in the cellar. We'll get them all together and send them all to Happy Tail. You wouldn't have to dig. The graves are all marked. Flowers on every single one. Flowers? Sure, and I put a nail into mine, which might Las Vegas up there. <laughs> I'm sure you have more important things to do, Lieutenant. You have to excuse her, Madeline. She's recently been married and thinks the whole world revolves around her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's got it. Amazing. Look, Dr. Witherspoon, is it? Don't you think you can find some room at Happydale for these ladies to join their nephew? Oh, well, of course. They have to be committed. Well, Teddy committed himself. Couldn't they commit themselves also? All they have to do is sign the papers. Certainly. Well, we can go with Teddy. We'll sign the papers. Where are they? Oh, I'd have them right here. Yeah. Sign them up. I'll legal and head to California. Now, I want this cleaned up tonight. 13 months in the cellar. I can't believe we had to head back to the station here about a hair is the same way. What a waste of time. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Wrong. Well, what could go wrong? 
They won't search up the signatures, will they? Oh no, they won't look up Dr. Stitch. It's not Dr. Stitch's signature we're worried about. It's yours. Mine? You see, you said it's next to Pitt. Yes? What's wrong with that? Martha, you tell her. Well, dear. What? And Martha? You're not really a rooster. Huh? What? What? Your mother came to us as a cook. You were born three months afterwards. She was such a good cook and such a sweet woman. We didn't want to lose her. So, so our brother Daniel married her. Your birth father was a chef on a massive sea boat. You mean, you mean I'm not really a rooster? Oh, darling, don't feel so badly about it. <laughs> I'm sure it won't make any difference to Evelyn. Evelyn, I forgot all about Evelyn. I was just trying to get these papers signed. <laughs> I knew it! Evelyn <laughs> tried to divorce me! <laughs>